Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott, and this is Jared and Raj. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this beautiful city, but why go outside when we can stay inside and talk about analytics? Am I right? <laughs> Um, so we've, we have talked about our problem statement today, so briefly I want to just cover it. We're going through a digital transformation where the customers requiring a more submersive experience, so we're ultimately trying to help Warner Brothers achieve that. Uh, as for our team, we're actually a partnership between uh, RAP and Cordera, both Omnicom companies. We're trying to ultimately bridge the gap between technical consulting and a data science specialty. Um, now talking about how we got to our results. Uh, yesterday, we spent a good amount of time getting tactical, answering three pointed questions. How long until next view, what time of day, and what type of device our customers are looking for. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We shifted that, using it as input into today, ultimately trying to deliver a more scalable solution um, into cluster analysis. So you might ask, what is cluster analysis? Cluster analysis is a data-driven approach that uses uh, demographics and behavioral data to unlock insights to ultimately enrich opportunities. Because ultimately we understand that while this is a data and analytics problem now, it's going to shift to a management problem for, for Warner Brothers. And th this, excuse me, cluster analysis helps them achieve buy-in. I'm now going to shift to Jared so he can talk about the results. Thank you, Scott. So uh, as Scott said, Stay near the microphone. Uh, as Scott said, we uh, used a k-means clustering algorithm. Uh, we uh, uh, overlaid all of the behavioral features that were the main drivers of the predictive models that we worked uh, through on the first day. Uh, and we uh, brought in uh, demographic data, uh, survey data, app downloads, other data that, that was made available uh, to us for the second round. Um, and the goal here was to develop a KPI agnostic, agnostic uh, segmentation of the customer base to really let the data speak and separate in meaningful ways. Um, and so we allowed the data to speak. Um, and where we landed was on five clusters. Um, and these clusters uh, um, uh, showed some, some very interesting patterns, um, very uh, distinct patterns around the preferred device usage, time of day, app interests, and what we found from the survey. Um, we generally classify these around sort of five main buckets. Uh, we found our social mavens, uh, our millennial mobile users, the, uh, the elite, we'll talk more about some of these folks on, on the next page as we, we dig in a little deeper, um, our dial-up users, and folks in the prime of life. Um, there are a lot of interesting insights that came out of this, um, but what we really want to focus the story on really is the, the next slide, um, because what we put this together for was, um, as a, uh, to Scott's point, a general, scalable, and easily applicable framework that can um, organize the data for us, right, and separate it into groups. Um, but then really the question is, well, well, how do we dig in and get insights out of this? Um, so inspired by some of the things we found on the first day, uh, one of the really interesting insights that came to mind was this idea, and one of the most non-intuitive results we found on the first day, was the prevalence of movie consumption over mobile devices. Um, it was not something that we expected. We expected that to be something that would be thrown up onto large TVs. Um, and we recognize that there may be some you know, technical uh, explanations for um, Apple TV and how these things kind of come through the, um, uh, through the data. But generally, uh, w when we challenged that insight, what we found was the most commonly viewed movies were all cartoons, or clearly children's programs. So the light came on in our head. Well, that's really interesting. Um, and so we decided that we would dig into families and see what this segmentation could tell us about families. What's nice about this framework is that once we have allowed the data to, to be separated out, um, we, can, we can dig in then um, in, into any segment of interest. So let's see what we found out when we decided to dig into families. Well, what we found was that families were concentrated within three of the buckets, and that there were very, very different types of families represented in these buckets. Um, we have our social mavens. These are the parents uh, um, and, and folks who are um, most like their children. Um, they are extremely heavily engaged. Um, massively over-indexing for their use of, of social and, and photography, Instagram, and things of that nature. Um, and uh, a very clear consumption pattern around, around late evening mobile device. Uh, we had our elites in the middle. Um, while they represent 67% of, of families, and we defined a family in a you know, very straightforward way, folks that indicated that they had uh, children in the household um, uh, through their demographics, um, this doesn't actually represent most of the kids. In fact, it's very few of the kids. These are, are generally one-child uh, households. These are high-income, uh, higher uh, education folks. Um, and they have a very, very clear and distinct pattern of behavior. Uh, very strong viewership weekend afternoons, shopping, um, and a, a high amount of interest or, or claim of ownership of, of smart TVs. Um, essentially, we have a, a successful person uh, on the weekend relaxing, watching sports, and uh, catching up on, on, on their shopping, right? Um, and finally, uh, we had our traditional families. Uh, 
the, uh, the prime of life for baby boomers. Uh, these are the folks that um, are, are more likely to, to watch through PC. Uh, these folks do not watch in the morning, and they do not watch at night because they are very busy with the business of home and family. Um, but we do catch them uh, in the afternoon more often than, than others. Um, we uh, also saw um, that these folks are particularly interested in live events, and uh, these are where our moviegoers um, are, are at. Um, and so from this, um, we can uh, uh, talk about some strategies and things that, that Warner Brothers could potentially do with this information. Um, so where can we go with this? Um, well, what we've given you here and what we were able to find is we were able to find three different types of families with three very different behavioral and demographic patterns. And we were able to point you to the platform or the device that gives the richest opportunity to reach and connect with those folks. Uh, we think for the social uh, uh, mavens, it is their use of streaming and the potential for uh, targeted uh, streaming service partnerships. Uh, with the elite, uh, these are the folks with the smart TVs. To the extent that we feel like there's an opportunity to play in or uh, engage in addressable uh, in the addressable or programmatic space, uh, there may be a future-facing opportunity to to connect with these folks um, and tap into the significant resources and potential revenue uh, that they may have. Um, but I also was very interesting to see our our prime of life folks, uh, the more traditional families. Um, uh, uh, these are the folks that, that if anyone's still going to the movies, it, it's them. Um, so to the extent that Warner Brothers wants to inform those uh, very, very substantive and important decisions around marketing investments and the other investments that accompany a movie theater release relative to, to content that goes straight to a, to a streaming service, uh, understanding these folks and where they're at and what their preferences are um, is going to be critical to getting those business decisions right. What we did not do for you is tell you what the content play was. Um, we looked into the survey data, and there were questions in our survey uh, that talked about the different types of genres or programs that folks liked. Uh, we found the data to be somewhat sparse, and uh, we have a little bit of a, a bias against uh, stated preferences, right? We like the revealed ones. So what we really wanted to do was scrape and dig through the URL information and some of that really deep and rich data that was mentioned by Taluna. Um, given the, the hackathon um, kind of constraints, we weren't able to do that, uh, but we certainly have um, um, specked out a, a potential approach, um, and, and with a little more time, um, we could actually dig in and get those, those revealed preferences and the actual content uh, that they've been viewing out of their URLs. Um, the other thing we wanted to mention um, was that we did have an opportunity to extend the clustering, but um, my time is up, so we'll, we'll leave that note for another day. Thanks.